Could these be another banger from Puma? Let's find out. What's up guys, Vinny here with Secret Tweaker and welcome back to another video. Today we have the first impressions review on the Puma Scoot Zeros. I want to call it the Scoot ones, but I, he, I guess he wanted to go with zeros based off his number, numbers, number, yeah. Anyway, these are the Puma Scoot Zeros, as I said. This shoe is a budget-friendly shoe. It is one of those shoes that is a debut signature shoe, but Scoot, I wouldn't say, is having the best rookie year. He is starting to do better, but again, it started off kind of rocky and I don't know where he's going to end up, honestly. But again, it is a signature shoe for a rookie athlete, which I didn't know that he was honestly going to get it. It kind of, whenever they announced it, it caught me by surprise. However, it does seem like it could potentially be a decent performer. I'm not gonna say it's going to be an amazing performer, but for the price, I would say it'd probably be a pretty decent performer. As always though, let's start it off with the foundation, the traction. Now the Puma Scoot Zeros feature a multi-directional traction pattern. Most of it is herringbone, but then you do have a more of a radial style pattern in the forefoot where your strike zones are. And the traction pattern, just for my initial wear in, in general, is going to be more of a silent traction. So for those of you that like feedback, that's not going to be there. However, they do seem like they're going to perform and perform really well as far as actual bite. On top of that, it does also look like it's not going to be the most durable because just on my initial wear and doing testing, it already looks like it has fraying. And normally for me, that doesn't happen until I've actually put in a decent amount of time on the shoes. And that's really weird for Puma. However, this strike zone in the forefoot area, the rubber is more pliable and, and pretty thin, I would say. So I can see how that would have durability issues. Overall though, I would say the bite was pretty good on an indoor court. I did test it out more of a time where I, I, it might have been, it was slightly clean. It wasn't like amazing. However, it was still able to bite. And I think that still says a lot as far as future performance. Now for the cushion, these feature Pro Foam or Pro Foam Plus, which is the same cushion setup that they had in the Puma Clyde All Pros. I wouldn't say it's as, uh, soft or as present as the Puma Clyde All Pros. Those I would say were more of a flagship model, but with these, this is more of a budget model and the heel, you do get some compression. However, once you get to the forefoot, the forefoot is, it honestly feels like your foot is literally right there with the floor. Like I'm telling you, it just feels like there's like no cushion at all in the forefoot. So for those of you that just like a ridiculous amount of court feel, this is going to have it. And honestly, uh, you're either gonna love it or you're gonna hate it. And for me, I was, uh, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about it because there are some days where I want court feel, but I don't think I want that much court feel because I am getting up there in age. And uh, you know, these knees ain't gonna last too much longer. If I play in shoes like this, super long-term. You know, it is what it is. As for the fit, the Scoot Zeros do fit true to size. They are, I would say, decently wide foot friendly. So for those of you that do have wider feet, you should be able to fit into these. Again, I would say try these on in store if at all possible. And then that way you have a better perception because it's not just the length of the foot or the width, but people have different foot shapes. And if you know, if you have a different foot shape than um, what's considered normal, then I would say again, go on and try that in store. Now for the materials and the support, the Puma, I, I don't know why I keep wanting to call these the Clyde All Pros or the All Pro Nitros, I guess because he had a colorway on the All Pro Nitros, but for the actual materials and the support, they do feature synthetics and just textiles. That's essentially what most shoes are made of. It's got like the synthetic leather material on the toe box. It kind of wraps around all the way around the midfoot, especially on the medial side. And then you do have textiles all over. Heel counter is made up of a felt material. And then you do also have this pull tab, which just feels really like, kind of like zip ties, honestly. That's what it feels like. I would say the materials are decent 
for what the, she was going for and just what it provides um i would say it's it's going essentially it's going to get the job done it's got good reinforcements and you will get that support i just don't know as much as as far as like breathability how much breathability is going to offer just because i don't really see anywhere where that heat is going to come out of only place i can think of a little bit is from the tongue but other than that i don't really see too much too many areas where, where that heat is going to be or where your feet are going to breathe this colorway is called the georgia peaches colorway and i mean i guess you guys can tell why it would be called georgia peaches it looks like peaches and yeah, they, honestly, I think the colorway looks nice. Overall, it looks like it's going to be a pretty promising shoe. And for a retail price of $100, I mean, there isn't really much room to complain. Just because, again, it is a more budget-friendly shoe. If you check out all these other debut signature shoes now, they do all retail closer to like 110 to 130. This one, I mean, I know it's like a $10 difference. And the one I'm thinking of right off the bat is the jaw ones which again, the jaw ones vary in price depending on colorway. I've seen them priced at 110, I've seen them priced at 140, just depending on the colorway. These ones, again, retailing at $100, and for what you get for the $100, I mean, I think it's a it's going to be a pretty good shoe. It's just right around that alley of like, let's say the Immortality 3s or the Yon's Immortality line. But again, like I said, it is a shoe that you are either going to love or you're going to hate because a lot of the those budget friendly models they do have more four foot cushion than i would say these do they're not going to be the best cushion or the softest however it is more present than what's in here now for the weight the puma scoop zeros do weigh in at 15.6 ounces in a size 9 which is pretty heavy i would say for a for a shoe like this or what, what what it's meant to be i wouldn't say it's like ridiculous it's not it's not like the a1 but it is a decently heavy shoe so for those of you that are wanting a lighter shoe this might not be it but you can always try these on again in store and just see how they feel on your feet it's not always about the numbers on the scale it's about how they feel on your feet and if they feel nice on your feet then hell hell with the numbers so just throw them right out the window now for the box the scoot zeros come in this generic puma box i mean even generic puma does a pretty decent presentation even on a 100 dollars shoe you do have a nice presentation on the box as far as just the graphics and everything overall i think these shoes are going to be a decent performer i don't think they're going to be the most amazing shoes but i don't think that's what puma was aiming for anyway I think they were essentially testing the waters with Scoot as far as, you know, seeing how this shoe does and how he does and how relevant he is. And then potentially they'll improve the shoe, put more tech in it as his NBA career grows or shrinks and they do the opposite. So hopefully, hopefully he does well. I think, you know, the more talent that's in the NBA, the more fun it is for people to watch. And I think it's great for the league. So I'm, I am hoping he does well and overall i mean puma just has been putting out great shoes and i think once he does even better then they have the potential to put out more and more bangers and this is i mean they have a long list of them and i think this is going to be just like the budget version of that now a lot of people also ask us where we get our basketball socks from the answer is from amazon they come in a pack of three that costs just as much as one pair of nike elite socks the ones we have are these two muted colors which the white one and the black one and they are quarter length so if you guys like quarter length they have them available in that but they also have them in the high top version like i said they come in a pack of three that costs just as much as the nike elites and these are pretty much the same thing but without the nike branding they're cushioned they're ventilated and they're amazing socks and they last a long time if you guys do want a pair hit the link in our description down below and go grab yourselves a pack not a pair grab yourselves a pack if you guys have played in the puma scoot zeros already let us know your experience down below if there are any other shoes you guys would like us to review again comment down below for more content like this please like subscribe and follow we'll see you guys in the next one Peace.